Next, I'm gonna to check to see if the holes in the back of the solar panel line up with the holes in the Z channel. continuing the build of the solar ground mount. Now in some previous videos you saw me build the uh, base for it. On top of that I'm going to build a frame. This is the mock-up for it. It's made out of galvanized steel Z-channel. <laughs> Face down. Uh-oh. <laughs> Don't step on it. Nope. On the back side of the solar panel there are two holes for mounting options. This is the inner more one. I'm using some bolts here that are quarter by 20. I've got the Z channel in with a bolt on each side. Let me show you how much play there is if I wiggle this. There's very little play in these holes so I'm going to have to be pretty accurate with my placement of this Z channel. I have all eight Z channels stacked up. This back end is flush, and these bolt holes are for the solar panels. So we're gonna have one solar panel here, number two, and number three. I'm doing three rows and four columns. So I'm gonna cut it right here in the middle. So I'm gonna mark it out with these guys and cut it with the bandsaw. I've been thrilled with the performance of this bandsaw, it's really awesome, but the original blade is terrible, so I left a link in the description below to a better blade. Cut through all of them. This is cold galvanized compound. All of our steel is now cut. This is the back support the bottoms, and this is the sloped section that will support the solar panels. The bottom support needs some dr holes drilled where it's going to have a U-bolt connect up to the 5-inch uh, pipe. Elena is going to help me and we're going to mark this out together. So here's my rough idea. I just want this front lip to be lined up kind of with the front of that timber edge of the pipe there and I know that the uh, bolt holes are going to be out in this location somewhere. Okay all my pieces are done. I have the holes drilled and I sprayed some galvanized coating on there. I wound up having to drill two sets of holes because my first set was in the wrong position. Uh, over here on the mock-up you can see that it actually has to go a certain way because all the other pieces need to lap on it in the same direction. So when I drilled the holes I had it kind of flipped the other way so the flange was facing the other side and there was no good way. I tried a bunch of different scenarios but I uh, wound up just drilling a new set of holes to get them all to line up properly and uh, they're all sprayed. Both of these nuts are as tight as they can go and there's still play in here and that's because the closest U-bolt that I could purchase has a five and a five eighth inch inside diameter because it's made for pipes with an outside diameter of five and a half inches. This particular pipe has an outside diameter of five inches which is unique. Uh, I haven't found that anywhere else and I haven't found any U-bolts that work with it. I don't know uh, what the purpose is or whatever, but that's what I'm dealing with. So, uh, I'm going to have to get some washers on here to take up that extra slack uh, or cut a plate and drill some holes for the plate. 
This aluminum is two by two by quarter inch thick angle. So now we were able to tighten that up. I'm going to be using the one that's closer to the center of the panel. So I drew a center line up from that. And same thing over here on this side. Now I can use that center line to help me line up where these holes are so I can get the spacing correct. I tightened this one. And now I can work my way over. Next, I've strung a line across the front to see where the high points are. And I'm just making fine adjustments with a little hammer and uh, get them all to line up straight before I do the final tightening. I'm pulling my diagonals to check for square. Stainless steel self-tapping screws. Well, already hitting just a little bit of an issue. As you can see, I put one screw in uh, just to keep it on the line, and now I can kind of tip it uh, forward and back in order to line it up with the square. And it has to tip farther back, but it won't because these two flanges are hitting each other here, and it's also uh, going to hit on the aluminum. Uh, the bar. So what I'm going to do, see I cut all these uh, to a fixed dimension down to this edge so that I could sit it down on this top piece. Uh, and I, I held this up a little bit from the very bottom but I didn't take that into account these lips hitting each other. So I'm going to recut uh, this um, back piece here at something of a diagonal uh, to give myself clearance for that. These uprights were really tippy, so I decided to add a, a cross piece to tie them together. I kept moving Eleanor away anytime that I had to make the screw, so don't worry, she didn't uh, have the loud noise in her ear. Yeah. <laughs> Eleanor put the end of my bit in the dirt. Apparently she likes clamps more than her teddy bear. I've strung a line so that it just goes across the very bottom edge of that slotted hole. Going across, same thing on the other side. And so now as I set the next ones down, that's what I'm going to try to line up to. And bring it out to the edge.
All right, well, I got them all lined up to the bottom of that string. Put one screw in the top of this guy and at the far end all the way at the other. Now the middle ones are all loose. They're not screwed together yet. And what I'm doing is I'm sighting down and I'm seeing slight variations as I sight down this, showing that there's kind of a dip in the middle. And then if I look down this way, what I'm seeing is a slight bow outward of the Z channel here. Now, this probably came out of the factory perfectly straight, but it was stored uh, unpalletized in a field with uh, you know junk on it and stuff, and so it got a little bit banged up. And all I've done here is taken a ratchet strap and I've tossed it on that Z channel up there. Now, if you can see, it's much straighter than it was. I might have even gone a little bit too far with it. added two more screws to every joint. I've now got three screws at the top, the bottom in the back, and the bottom in the front. So now all the triangles are nice and secure. They're not gonna go anywhere. They're in plane with each other. It's looking good. Not counting the Z-channel frame, I have a grand total of 3,000 pounds of ballast. That's with the uh, timbers, the five inch galvanized pipes, and the big giant steel. Hopefully it's not gonna blow away. Well, the frame's up behind me, but I'm not yet ready to install the solar panels because the whole frame can still tip side to side. This is called racking. I need to install some diagonal bracing in the back to prevent the whole thing from racking side to side. Now before I install all this diagonal bracing, which is going to prevent me from moving it at all, uh, I need to make sure that all the spacing at the top is dead on with the holes in the back of the solar panels. Here's the back side of one of the solar panels I'll be using. And you can see these holes are drilled. There's two sets. I'm going to be using the inner more one. So here and here's where I'm going to be mounting it. According to the manual, these are 48.03 inches on center. I'm going to uh, set up a, just a jig, just uh, a bar to confirm that. I grabbed a random piece of aluminum out of my pile that I have, and this is a little bit longer than 48, uh, so I'm just going to be lining this up and making marks with the Sharpie and then drill these out so that I get exactly the right distance apart. I pulled a couple random bolts that just happened to have the right size shank and drilled some holes that are just big enough without much play in there. Okay, let's see how well it lines up. Nice. That's terrific, so there, that's exactly what I wanted. Real, very, very little play in there. So I'm gonna drill one more hole so that I can basically put one in here and then go to the next Z channel over and leave myself a one inch gap between the panels. And that one inch gap is just a random number I chose. So it looks like there is uh, 14 and a half. Uh, let's see, that would mean I'd want the hole space 30 inches apart. Both bolts in, but they were tight to get in there. So over here on this one, um, you can see s some of the steel. They don't line up perfect. And I can loosen the bolt just slightly. There we go. So now that I tap that over, those things line up perfect. Look at that. I didn't have to struggle with that, so now I can retighten that bolt. And on the next one, I have to use this 30 inch hole right there, and I'll be able to line up the next one. So I'm just going to go down the line with it. With the front
front and back of the bottom Z channels all perfectly uh, parallel with each other. Next is going to be the top. Attach a piece of Z channel. I cut this one at 13 and a half feet uh, so that it can just go diagonally. I'm going to put one screw in at the bottom so it can act like a pivot point. This is what I was doing. I was, I got the screw in back there, and I was watching the bubble for plumb. All right. So now that I have that plumb, I'm going to go through and add uh, more screws to the rest of all these cross braces. Well, I probably did that wrong because what I wanted to do was be able to adjust the rest of them. So, whoops. I've been sick this whole week, so I've been making these silly mistakes over and over again. And I just put my jig in this hole, and over here I'm not lining up, as you can see. So I do have to take that off. Now all of this, you know, I can probably bend steel enough. See, I'm. I can do it, but I have the opportunity right now to get it dead on, so I might as well. So I've got to take this screw out and the one from the diagonal brace that I just threw in, <laughs> like a goof. And now you can see that this guy can move back and forth, but this one is still rigid. So I can take my jig. I'll get my bolt out here, and I can put my bolt in. Remember, there's very little play in this. Just like that. So now, I can go back, and I'm gonna add my screws to the diagonal piece. I'm gonna put two in the diagonal piece, uh, because I'm not gonna use this cross piece anymore. I'm just gonna have the diagonals. The next video will either be bolting the solar panels to the frame, because the frame's done, uh, or I might put in the combiner box and run some wires back to the disconnect. Not sure yet, but stay tuned and thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoy these videos, please like, subscribe, comment, and share.